Welcome to Music and Medicine. Welcome to Music and Medicine. Welcome to Music and Medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Moshe Lewis. Welcome to Music and Medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Moshe Lewis. I'm really excited. I'm really looking forward to this interview today with Brandon Howard, stage name B. Howard. He has worked and comes from musical royalty. His mother, nonetheless, is Miss Mickey Howard. Worked with everybody in the business, starting off with Gerald Levert and bringing it all the way today current, doing hits internationally and also blowing up here now on the dance charts here in the U.S. Welcome. Thanks. How are you? Yeah. So I'm doing great. Um, I love your vibe, I love your spirit, um, so peaceful, so calm. Um, let's talk about sort of just literally growing up in music because we all know and love your mom, Mickey Howard. Mm -hmm. Well, growing up in music is, is a, it's a beautiful thing. Um, it's like you have, you know, the best uh, music class ever if you ever wanted to be involved into music. And even as a person, you get to develop a sense of the world where you get a has to travel to different places, learn about different cultures and experiences, and it's a wonderful thing to bring that back. Sure. Who were some of your other mentors kind of growing up and that really inspired you? Uh, other mentors are, you know, Shaka Khan, uh, the Jacksons, um, golly, Teddy Riley. Um, There's just so many different, different variations of people that, you know, I grew up and stuff. Sure. Yeah. Now, as you know, there's a little bit of controversy out there and things like that. You have the look, you have the sound, you have the feel. Talk to us a little bit about your understanding about sort of, you know, your father and things like that and how that relationship did or didn't develop. Oh, I mean, oh, well, it's, it's kind of an interesting subject to tap into. But um, I'm very fortunate to be able to be raised by a good surrounding and to have this all the support that I can and what could happened to be there for my circumstances and I'm just not nothing short of love yeah. no absolutely um, I want to talk a little bit about sort of that initial journey and things like that some of those initial um, songs and things like that you started working with what it was like working with Gerald Levert in particular well um, initially you know, I was a, you know I was a child but you know having my first tracks and not knowing what to do and I just sent them over and he happened to be at the studio working on a group that he had a LSG or something right. at the time. Right. And the guys didn't show up on time, so he happened to play the song from Ivan Walker, shout out. Shameless plug yeah. <laughs> to my friend. But um, yeah, he played it and they got to record it. And when we went into the studio and just to get a feeling of his parts and how I wanted to have his vocal sound, it was really interesting. Whereas like, you know, you learn not now, it's like, the youth is your voice, right. you know, and the seasons knows how to put that voice together or chaos, chaos of ideas. <laughs> Me wind and rain 
want to talk a little bit about some of the challenges you face, because if I'm not mistaken, even though you were growing up in this world, so I wanted to do the setup, uh, your family didn't really want you to be going into music. Oh, yeah, that's true. So how intense was that, and what was that challenge and experience that's very like? It's very intense. It's two different spectrums. As a child, you're looking at it like, what is, what is this? Mm -hmm. Why not? Why? I want to do. Then you go up, you understand the business, you go into this business, you have your own experiences and your own um, challenges, and then you understand why. So it's like, you know, it was a very much at the time, why? And I felt like I'm being held back. And it is true, it's a hold back, but a hold back for a different reason. For, you know, the industry can be a tough on people. And, you know, I'm sure you've read, you know, or seen different things, uh, Me Too, and different things that happen that don't just happen to women, they happen to, mi to men, children. There's all sorts of possibilities that could happen. And this, a, a, a parent's gonna wanna protect you from that. Yeah. And to what extent do you feel like you've been able to sort of rise above it? but also kind of like, you know, grow um, since you kind of, you know, had a lot of inside help. Mm -hmm. I mainly, I guess I can maintain an integrity. Mm -hmm. I maintain my integrity. Um, I'm fortunate to be able to um, go into different places and, and more so people, instead of trying to corrupt me right. in certain ways, like, you know, of course there are some people, but most people try to protect me and they'll just, you know, I'm the little brother, you know, I've grown up here and I've seen it, I've been very fortunate in those that are coming after me, other talents and stuff that I work with and stuff. I'm, I'm glad to take them with me and keep them under my wing and show them the good side of the business. You know, like a Rocky Balboa, you know, where, you know, he, he had different fighters come under and you just keep them on the good side of the business. And there are a lot of great people in this business to work with. Right. And if somebody were to say, um, who do you identify as being your father? Who would you say that person is? Or God. maybe you don't know. Okay. No, I, I honestly, I just, you know, it, I pray to God. I love God and, and everything in my life has been more so guided by that energy and that spirit, you know, whatever you want to call it. That is a father sure. of all. When you're overseas and traveling, talk to us about that experience and sort of how you're received and sort of really just the way sort of fans may be different. It's like they've seen me. <laughs> like when I, when I land and I'm in town and they hear the music, they just, just like, it feels like, you know when you have a family waiting for you and when you come off the plane and they're all there like, hey, welcome home. It's like one of those type things. I feel very happy when I see them and they see me and I, they're like, old friends or whatever it is, I come out and I give them hugs and, you know, I try to be as cordial as possible sure. without them ripping off my shirt. <laughs> like one, one other time happened. On, you know, it's just, you, just the excitement. It's very, they're excited, the people are happy. And it's, again, it's very inspiring to want to give something more to them. I want to give, I want to continue to give and, you know, show them how much I appreciate them. Right, let's just suppose that to the, U.S. where there's tremendous competition and it's really difficult. Oh. How do you stay inspired? How do you continue to sort of go out there each day and sort of really, you know, work your craft? I just kill it. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I do my best. Right. Like, I mean, I don't worry about, how am I going to worry about some, what somebody else is doing? I mean, I'm not, I'm not in competition with anybody. I'm just enjoying myself, enjoying my craft and letting my craft be heard. I'm fortunate when I'm able to share the stage with people like Ray J, Jacquees, or go to, you know, classic venues with, you know, Stephanie Mills and, you know, all these Atlantic stars, people like that, 112, where I go on stage, I hold my own, whether you know my music or not, you're there clapping, you're cheering for me, and then we're, we're you know, doing the thing. That's all I'm worried about. Sure. Absolutely. What's the biggest message you want to communicate in your message and that you're hoping in your music kind of comes across? Hope. You know, my message is hope. I, I like, want everything to come across that you can feel it. You know, you feel it, you move, and there's a hope for better things if you're going through something and whatever, no matter if I'm talking about partying or whatever I'm talking about, inside the energy is hope and uplifting. And that's what I like 
to see when I see people and they hear my music or whatever, and they, they have that experience. Sure. And to even experience me through my music. Sure. Our show is called Music and Medicine. When you hear those words as we wrap up, what does that mean to you? Oh, uh, <laughs> music is healing. Mm -hmm. sure. That's what resonates with me. I, you know, I have a foundation that I'm putting together called Hope is Here and H-E-A-R, right. where we're gonna work with people with cancer and uh, autistic children that have talent, sure. they need an outlet. Talk to us about your latest song, Shameless Plug. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, my latest song, Loud, is one of my, one of my fun, fun pieces. I'm glad I, I got a chance to release it. And the music video I, I recorded in both Amsterdam and in Kiev in Ukraine with a lot of local workers and local dancers and stuff. And, and it was really exciting to create the song. You, you know, from the song to the video, it's a lot of fun. And I have a new new song coming out shortly. Um, we have yet to make sure we pick the single, but I think I know the single. Sure. You may but know the single. Hopefully but it's the celebrate. song that's a, that's a ballad that I'm really excited about. Sure. Absolutely. You've heard it here from B. Howard himself, his music, really hopes to continue to inspire that feeling, that feeling of hope um, and love. And you can see the warm nature that he has in terms of trying to share his gift you know, with the world and continuing to sort of uplift our planet and certainly bringing up Ukraine at a time like this and going there to really work with people locally to help not only uplift their country, but for us to never forget is something that's near and dear to our hearts. Thanks so much. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Welcome to Music and Medicine. Welcome to Music and Medicine. Welcome to Music and Medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Moshe Lewis. 